Hello and welcome back. In this video we are going to dive into the calculation of the electronic structure of graphene, a two-dimensional honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms. To this end, we will apply the linear combination of atomic orbitals method. If you're not familiar with this topic, you can check our video on the topic in our solid state physics playlist. Here, we will present a step-by-step -step calculation that includes all the ingredients to fully understand the basics of electronic states in graphene. The procedure presented here is general and can be utilized to calculate the electronic structure of any crystalline material system. Let's begin. We begin by defining the crystal structure of graphene. Graphene is a two-dimensional array of carbon atoms organized in a honeycomb structure as explicitly shown by the electron microscope image show here. From our previous discussion on crystal structure of solids, we saw that such arrangement of atoms does not constitute a Bravais lattice. Instead, graphene's crystal structure is defined in terms of a hexagonal lattice with a two atoms basis. The hexagonal lattice can be seen here, which can be fully described by a pair of primitive lattice vectors as shown next. Recall that any lattice point can be reached by a linear combination of these two vectors with integer coefficients. The length of the lattice vectors, a, is the lattice constant of graphene. It equals root of 3 times the distance between two adjacent carbon atoms, which is about 1.42 angstroms. The full honeycomb structure of graphene can be constructed from the hexagonal lattice plus a basis of two atoms, which is highlighted here. Because we have a two atoms basis, it is customary to label each atom by an alphabet letter. Here, we label the atoms A and B as shown in the figure. We see that the set of all A or B atoms individually form hexagonal lattices. For example, here the hexagonal lattice of the A atoms. And here is the hexagonal lattice of the B atoms. These are usually called sublattices. Hence, the honeycomb structure of graphene can be viewed as being made by two hexagonal sublattices. Because we have a two atoms basis, any primitive unit cell must contain these two atoms. Here we show a unit cell that explicitly includes both atoms in it. Note that it is a primitive unit cell because it contains a single lattice point. Finally, we explicitly write down the vectors connecting nearest neighboring carbon's atoms. For simplicity, we only show the vectors connecting a B site to its three nearest neighboring A sites. These vectors will be crucial in determining the block Hamiltonian for electrons in graphene. All definition provided here completely specify the crystal structure of graphene. The next step is to study the character of the orbitals involved in the construction of block states for traveling electrons in graphene. The electronic configuration of each carbon atom is highlighted in the green box. The valence electrons occupy 2s and 2p states. This suggests that traveling block waves in graphene have s and p character. Thus, we consider s and p basis to describe block electrons in graphene. This means that electrons can occupy s, px, py or pz states in each carbon atom in a given unit cell totaling 8 orbitals per unit cell in our model. Hence, the Hamiltonian for electrons in graphene is a 8 by 8 matrix with 2 sublattices plus 4 orbital degrees of freedom. We examine the Hamiltonian shape in the next slides. First, we recall that in the linear combination of atomic orbital method we need to compute the Hamiltonian elements in the orbital basis before getting the final block Hamiltonian. Because we have a model consisting of more than one atom in the unit cell and several orbitals, it is convenient to relabel the orbital state indexes into orbital and atomic indexes. This is done here, where the superscripts in Greek letters label the atom sublattice in the unit cell and the subscripts label the orbitals in each atom. Hence, the Hamiltonian in the orbital basis can be organized in sublattice blocks as shown. The Hamiltonian block in the diagonal 
that is the A A block and the B B block, are 4x4 matrices containing the Hamiltonian elements between different atomic orbitals between two A type or B type carbon atoms, respectively. The off diagonal block contains all the Hamiltonian elements between different atomic orbitals between A type and B type carbons. More explicitly, each Hamiltonian block is shown here. Our job now is to calculate all the elements of all sublattice blocks. Here, we're going to focus on the calculation of the Hamiltonian elements involving PZ orbitals only for reasons that will become clear later on. The calculation of all other elements proceeds in the same way, and we leave that as an exercise. The Hamiltonian elements between PZ orbitals are explicitly written here for reference. Note that we have a set of four of the elements, corresponding to distinct sublattice combinations, for each lattice vector, R. Let's begin by analyzing the matrix elements in the home unit cell. That is, between atoms in the same unit cell. The home unit cell is shown here. We have four Hamiltonian elements, corresponding to brackets between all possible combinations between A and B type atoms within the same unit cell. The elements are written down explicitly here. The matrix elements between the same atom type within the same unit cell are just the energies corresponding to a specific orbital state. We call the energy of an electron in a p orbital in carbon EP. Hence, the AA and BB elements are just the energy EP. The elements between different atom types within the same unit cell are the slater coster parameters corresponding to a pi bond between the two PZ orbitals, VPP pi. As we saw in a previous video, these parameters are simply a number and can be found in literature for specific compounds. Thus, we found all the Hamiltonian elements for PZ states corresponding to the home unit cell. Next, we compute the Hamiltonian elements corresponding to a distinct unit cells. The next unit cell is neighboring to the home unit cell and corresponds to the lattice vector R1 shown in the figure. As before, there are four matrix elements corresponding to all possible combinations between A and B type atoms. The matrix elements are also written here in terms of the slater coster parameters. Note that the largest elements is the one corresponding to the A-type atom in the home cell and B-type atom in the neighboring unit cell, which equals VPP pi, as before since all atoms are carbon. The two atoms providing the largest matrix element is highlighted. The other elements are exponentially smaller because the atoms participating in the overlap are farther apart. The exponential decaying factor appears because of the short wave function decay length delta, as clarified in our previous video on the linear combination of atomic orbitals method. In proceeding, we assume that the matrix elements containing the exponential terms are negligible in comparison to the matrix elements between the nearest neighboring atoms, like the one highlighted above. Such approximation is known as the nearest neighbor's approximation, by obvious reasons. Hence, we only have one non-zero matrix element between atoms in the unit cells highlighted. Note that the exponential decay of the matrix elements also means we only need to consider a few unit cells around the home cell, instead of considering an infinite number of them in our calculations. The contributions of the further unit cells are exponentially smaller and can be neglected as well. It is the localized nature of the atomic orbital that enables us to confine our analysis to only a few unit cells around the home cell. That's good news. Hence, we only look into the contributions between the unit cell closest to the home cell. The next one is shown here. As before, the largest matrix element corresponds to the overlap between neighboring A and B atoms in the different unit cells. All the remaining matrix elements are negligible within the nearest neighbor approximation. Finally, the non-negligible contributions from the remaining neighboring unit cells are shown here. Note that they correspond to the overlap of a B-type atom in the home unit cell with an A-type atom in the neighboring unit cell, which is opposite from what we had before. Hence, we were able to compute all matrix elements within the nearest neighbor approximation between PZ orbitals. 
The other matrix elements between S, Px, Pi and Pz orbitals can be computed in the same fashion but utilizing the appropriate Slater-Coster parameter. We list here all SP Slater-Coster matrix elements. Before proceeding further, we have to generalize the relation between the Hamiltonian elements and the block and orbital basis. The highlighted relation, discussed in previous videos, was obtained by considering a crystal with a basis containing a single atom. Now, we need to generalize it for a crystal with a basis containing multiple atoms to be able to compute the block Hamiltonian for graphene. The most general relation for system containing multiple atoms in the basis is highlighted in the green box. Note that we are following our previously established labeling system, where Greek letters label the sublattice type and the Roman letter the orbital type. The biggest difference is that the exponential term inside the summation over the unit cells contains the distances between every pair of atom and orbitals possible. Instead of just the lattice vector R as in the previous case in the blue box. The location of the center of the orbital labeled by M of the atom label by beta in the unit cell R is written explicitly. The important quantity now introduced in the center of the n orbital of a given atom in a given unit cell, which we represent by a vector tau. Now, we are in position to write down the Hamiltonian elements corresponding to the pz states in graphene. Expanding the summation over the neighboring unit cells only, we have the following for the AB block and the BA block. The argument of the exponentials contain the difference between the centers of the pz orbitals associated with the nearest neighboring carbon atoms between different unit cells. For completeness, we include this information here. Note that all the differences between the orbital centers of neighboring carbon atoms are given in terms of only three nearest neighbors vectors. Finally, we can write down the final form of the matrix elements for pz orbitals in graphene. Note that all coefficients multiplying the exponential factors are equal to VPP pi, the Slater-Coster parameter. Hence, we obtain the following highlighted in blue. Note that there are only two numerical parameters we still don't know about, VPP pi and EP. Before, providing their numerical values, we write down the full matrix Hamiltonian for graphene including all the other contributions for S, Px and Pz orbitals. We wrote down all matrices corresponding to the A and B sublattices blocks, as per our previous analysis. Note that the A A and B B block are independent of momentum K. All dependence on momentum comes from the A B, or B A blocks through the structure factors defined below. Putting it all together, the full graphene Hamiltonian in the block basis is shown above and the value of the Slater-Coster parameter are provided in the table. To obtain the band structure of graphene, we need to diagonalize the Hamiltonian. It is customary to define a specific set of momentum values and plot the band structure along it. Let's look at graphene's Brillouin zone and define a specific set of momentum values. Here we show graphene's Brillouin zone as well as the reciprocal lattice vectors B1 and B2. The reciprocal lattice vectors as explicitly written here as well. In plotting the band structure, we first specify a few highly symmetric momentum points in the Brillouin zone. For graphene, these points are gamma, the center of the Brillouin zone, K and K prime which are two inequivalent corners of the hexagonal Brillouin zone, and the M points, which is at the boundary of the Brillouin zone at the midpoint neighboring K and K prime points. Next, we give the coordinates of only three of these highly symmetrical points explicitly. These correspond to the momentum space coordinates of the points highlighted in red. Now, we select a path in momentum space connecting these high symmetry points and compute the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian for each momentum along each path. Our path begin at the gamma point and returns to the gamma point after passing through K and M. The eigenvalues of graphene's Hamiltonian derived previously are shown here in blue line. The horizontal dashed line demarcates the highest occupying energy levels in graphene. 
That is, the Fermi level. Interestingly, there is no energy gap at the vicinity of the Fermi level in the energy spectrum of graphene. Instead, higher and lower energy band touch at the momentum coinciding with the K point, where the energy versus momentum relation is linear. This unique feature of electron states in graphene is one of the main reason why electron behavior is quite peculiar in this material. The subtleties of electronic behavior in graphene will be addressed in upcoming videos. To finalize, we want to briefly discuss the orbital character of electronic states associated with these energy bands. This is shown here. To each band structure plot, we superpose the module square of the amplitude corresponding to each orbital considered in our analysis. The colors show the intensity or the weight of each associated orbital for a given eigenstates of graphene. For instance, we see that all electronic eigenstates having non-vanishing s, px or py orbital weight are those corresponding to the three energy bands with lowest energies. This is shown in the top three plots, where a large orbital weight corresponds to the yellow color and the vanishing orbital weight to the blue color. The crossing bands at the Fermi level have zero s, px and py orbital weights, as apparent from the dark blue color. Electrons occupying states in the lower energy bands, where the orbital weight of s, px and py orbitals is large while the orbital weight of pz states is non-existent. These correspond to hybrid orbitals, which we call sp2 orbitals. This is shown here. The center of these orbitals lie in between two carbon atoms and they are said to be responsible for the strong covalent bond between adjacent carbon atoms. From the band structure plots, we see that the energies associated with these states can reach tens of electron volts, which are quite strong. This means that an immense amount of energy has to be fed to graphene to break such bonds, thus guaranteeing a very strong stability to the graphene sheet. Because these sp2 states are much lower than the Fermi level of graphene, shown by the dashed line, they don't participate in the conduction properties for this material. On the other hand, the pz orbital weights are intense for the two bands crossing the Fermi level, where the bottom band structure plot show the bright yellow color. Note that these are the only states at the Fermi level, which means that the conduction properties of graphene are due to the pz state. The pz orbitals do not hybridize with other orbitals, as can be seen in the bottom figure, and they stay perpendicular to graphene's plane as shown in the orbital plot. Because of this, Further analysis of the behavior of conduction electrons in graphene can be confined to the study of PZ states only, which explains why we carefully address the derivation of the Hamiltonian elements between PZ orbitals. This concludes our discussion on the calculation of the electronic structure of graphene. In following videos, we will further explore the intriguing behavior of PZ electron states in graphene. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.